Hello everyone, my name is Caden Herring and I'm a consultant at Encryption Consulting. Encryption Consulting covers all the aspects of data protection landscape as far as encryption, data security, key management, and privacy go. We help clients in understanding and implementing cybersecurity models as per their threat landscapes. In today's video, we'll be discussing about an emerging technique in access management, machine identity management. So now without any delay, let's get started. So what is machine identity? With ever-increasing digital transformation in the current world, there is a vast increase in machines. The rapid migration to cloud technology has also pushed the firms to move beyond the scope of network perimeter and legacy firewalls. So in this scenario, machine identities come into picture. This machine identification is, is a digital credential or fingerprint used to establish trust and authenticate other machines and also to encrypt communication. Regardless of the number of identities involved or the complexity of the enterprise network, it's essential that the whole machine identity in, uh, life cycles are effectively managed, ensuring that access is only allowed to legitimate users or machines. Generally, the user identity is represented by a username and password, such as when a user logs into an application. They enter their username and password, the application checks the username and password in the database, and if the credentials match, the user is authenticated. Similarly, machines need to be authenticated for secure communication with other machines. A machine identification is much more than a digital ID number or a simple identifier like a serial number or a MAC address or a part number. It is a collection of authenticated credentials that confirm this, that a system or user can access online services or a network. A machine cannot enter a username and password. Instead, they use a set of credentials that are better suited to highly automated and linked settings. Machines have digital certificates and keys to help establish their identity. To secure network communications, every internet protocol, such as HTTPS, SSH, FTP, and so on, check and authenticate machine identities. Machine identities also help to achieve zero trust security model, which basically means that no matter whether you're inside or outside an organization's network, for instance, you have to be authenticated, authorized, or even continuously validated uh, just for security purposes and configuration. So how does machine identity management work exactly? You can see in the graphic here, it's a high level of the working process of machine identity management. When a client tries to establish a connection with a web server, the server provides its digital certificate on receiving the connection request. After that, the client verifies the digital certificate and verifies the server's identity. When dealing with sensitive applications, the server may also request that the client authenticate its identity by sharing its certificate. After authentication, both exchange keys for encryption and hashing and get a secured connection established. So as far as commonly used certificates and keys that make up machine identity, here are some common examples of some ways to uh, enforce this identity check, such as SSH keys and certificates. Users, usually system administrators, uh, use SSH keys to secure privileged access to critical systems. Because SSH keys are used to authorize access to important IT systems, the SSH protocol is more secure than TLS or SSL. While it's not common practice to use SSH certificates for authentication, it is recommended as it eliminates the manual, insecure process of key approval and distribution. And for code signing certificates, they help ensure that scripts, executables, and software builds are genuine and preventing them from being tampered with, and it helps to build trust with the users. And with cryptographic keys, uh, particularly symmetric keys, they are used to protect data at rest and in transit, uh, and also for encrypting uh, credit card or other personally identifiable information. Uh, however, symmetric keys are less secure, but faster and more efficient than a public key cryptography. And then for the case of X509 certificates, they're the most extensively used machine identification certificates and pretty much the backbone of PKI as a whole, public key infrastructure. Server client authentication over the HTTPS protocol, uh, as well as digitally signing offline applications use these certificates for authentication. So why is all this important? Similar to the loss of user credentials leading to lost data, uh, when a machine loses its, its identity, an attacker can gain access to it and therefore access to an organization potentially to inject malicious code or steal information, which can really result in some serious damage. So it's super important to manage these things so that the identities uh, don't fall into the wrong hands and could potentially cause this kind of damage. 
but also to uh, manage the explosive growth of machines these days because the number of machines in the world is outpacing the number of people that use them as far as like mobile, cloud, internet of things, devices, etc. Um, it makes machine identity management very, very difficult. So we have to make sure that we're ready for it. And also for the proliferation of secure cloud-based machines, the rapid evolution of cloud services requires an, a rapid assessment of the machine trustworthiness, uh, including cloud workloads, virtual machines, containers, microservices, and because of the fluid nature of these interactions, their identities might be compromised. And also to protect the identity of connected devices. There are a number of devices whose identities are connected to the internet, like, you know, different robots, medical devices, sensors, it keeps getting, you know, we can go on and on. Many of these devices use encrypted channels controlled by machine identities to transmit and store important data. So this brings us to the end of the video. We'll come up with some more interesting and useful cryptographic content soon in the next video. And if your organization is looking for any implementation of, a, of any kind of material that we talked about today, feel free to contact us at info at encryptionconsulting.com for further information. Thank you.